everyone i have another really cute treat box to share with you today today we are making a cute window box that uses these really cute reese's nutcrackers and i've seen these in all kinds of stores so i know they are readily available but isn't this cute there's a little window box you can see your little treats inside so this is the box we're going to make today so let's get started so to make this box you're going to need a piece of cardstock that is five and a half by five and we're going to do some scoring on the long side at half an inch at two and a quarter inches at three and at four and three quarters and all of these measurements are going to be in the video description so don't worry about that now on the short side we're going to score at three quarters and at four and a quarter and that is all of the scoring so we'll get this simply scored out of the way and i'm going to grab my bone folder and we're going to do some burnishing on all of the score lines. This box is really quick to put together, so if you need to make a bunch of them, this is a great box to make. You could do all the scoring all at once, all the die cutting all at once, all the stamping all at once. Just do a real assembly style. Okay, now we are only going to do a little bit of trimming on here. We are just going to cut off these little half inch tabs down here on your half inch score line. This is all we're removing. Just those score lines, just like that. And then we are trimming in on all of the rest of the score lines. And then on the squares, we're just gonna notch in just a little bit. And that's just gonna help the box go together just a little bit easier if those sides are notched in. So that is what we're doing on that side. We're gonna flip it, we're gonna do the same exact thing on this side just trim up the score lines and then just notch in and these little um square tabs will be hidden so if your notching is a, a little rough or it's not perfect don't worry nobody's gonna see it all right so i'm gonna lay that down this is what your box is gonna look like and just for good measure just so the box goes together a little easier we're just gonna notch in these just a little bit when it, a flap tucks in it's just it makes it easier if it's notched in a little bit and these side flaps are gonna be touched touched tucked in too so you can trim those ends as well i'm just eyeballing it because nobody's going to be getting on a ruler nobody's going to be checking your measurements i'm just eyeballing that you can use a paper trimmer if you want but i'm just going about a half there and then just trimming these at an angle too because that's going to make your your box go together much easier now that is an optional step if you want to trim the sides it does help but it's not required so that is what your box looks like now to get the window in our box, we are going to do a little bit of die cutting. So I am using the stitch nested label dies. This is the fourth smallest. And this one fits just perfectly into the section here. If you wanted a smaller window, you could go down a size or two. Okay, so the part that we're die cutting is the lid where we did all of that notching on the side. So I'm going to lay this on here and I'm actually going to use a piece of post-it tape just to hold it down because I don't want... I don't want this to move and then cut somewhere that it's not supposed to. Now that die just fits perfectly in between those score lines. So as long as I have it centered this way, I'm good. So let me bring in the cut and emboss machine. And I know this is going to be really close. Let me move this over just a little bit. I know this is close to the camera, so I do apologize. Get some stuff out of the way. I'm going to bring in my platforms. I have one, two, three. My paper and then another three and we're just going to cut this real quick now you could use a punch for this a punch should fit up there so if you had a small rectangle punch or a small circle punch you could also use that punch so let's get this out of the way move that and we have our our box with the window now you can save this piece to use for another project okay now let's get to assembling the box. The first thing we're going to do is add our window sheet. So I have a little window sheet here just so that none of those candies fall out, but you can still see. So I just measured this um, window piece, how wide that is, and just cut a piece approximately the same size. It's slightly smaller. I think I'm down to like 16th of an inches. So this is, I'll, I'll try to give you some rough, me rough measurements. This is about one it's between one and five eighths and one and three quarters. And then it's between 
see, two and seven eighths, or no, two and four, what is two and three eighths and three and a half, two, three and a, my gosh, you guys, I cannot tell measurements. <laughs> go ahead and measure this. So this is about, let's go three and three eighths and let's see, one and five eighths. So we'll go one and five eighths and three and three eighths, and that should work. You just want to lay that there. If you want super precise exact measurements, go ahead and measure your your opening. And if you use a different um, punch, you're, you might not need as big of a piece of, of window sheet. So I'm only putting glue around the sides there. This is just going to get adhered in. Math and numbers are hard today, you guys. My goodness. And I'm just using a little bit of liquid glue. You could use any kind of adhesive for that. And that will fold up perfectly. So we're going to give that just a second to dry. And while that's drying, we'll come back to this. So while that's drying, let's do our stamping and our coloring. Now for the stamping, I am using the Christmas Gleaming stamp set. This is a great stamp set. This is a returning favorite in the mini catalog right now. And there are punches that coordinate with these ornaments. So make sure you check that out. So we're just stamping the holly today, though. So I'm going to ink that up with Memento. We're going to color with blends. I'm just going to stamp that down and let's get to our blends. So the colors I'm using today are Just Jade and Magenta Madness. So I'm going to start with my dark Just Jade and where the veins of the holly are, I'm just going to go in and color with my Just Jade. And then around the berries, I'm going to give a little bit of darker color too because they're, they're going to be casting a shadow. Right, I'm going to go in with my light Just Jade and give that... A good wash over the top just kind of blend out those darker colors just a little bit and then if you feel that it's too much you can go in and add some more darker to that perfect beautiful so let's do the same thing on the other side I'm gonna use my dark and just color where those veins are that's a good indication of where it's going to be darkest the artist has already done a lot of that thinking for you so you don't have to do that we're going to go in with our light, just give it a good once over. The Stampin' Blends are so much fun to color with. They are my favorite. Okay, I'll just give that a little bit darker color there. And that is it with our Just Jade. So if you had a lot of these to make, you could stamp them all at once and then just watch a movie and, and color them. So I'm going to start with my Dark Magenta Madness, and I'm just doing a little bit darker on one side of the of the berry. I don't think it matters which side. Again, people are not going to be inspecting your coloring. And then I'm just going to go in with the, the light, just kind of bring those colors together. I think this is a fun color combination for Christmas. It's still, oh, still on the red and green scale, but I just love those bright colors. So that is all your coloring. So you're going to fussy cut that out and through the magic of television, already done that. You're also going to stamp the greeting in that stamp set and fussy cut that out. I stamped this in Magenta Madness. So those are our stamped pieces. So let's get back to our box now. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put adhesive. I'm going to use my stamp and seal plus and I'm just going to put adhesive on the four tabs that we cut. And that is all the adhesive we're going to need. You could use tear tape. You could use Tombow glue if you want. And all I'm doing is matching this score line with this cut line. That is it. Just tuck that one in. And that is your box, you guys. Quick and easy. Your little nutcrackers will fit in there. You can line them up so that they can be seen. This will tuck right in. Just like that. <laughs> and there you go. Now if you wanted to, you could add a little finger notch. I'm not going to do it on this one. I did do it on this one, and it just it makes the box a little bit easier to open. I just used a half-inch circle punch, and we don't currently sell a half-inch circle punch, but I know a lot of you have half-inch, three-eighths-inch circle punches, and that's, so you would just punch that right here before you assemble it. All right, so we have our box all put together. Let's add our embellishments. Let's add our stamped images. So I'm just going to use some dimensionals. I'm just going to stick this on the back. Now those Stampin' Blends will bleed, bleed through. If you don't like that, you can always back it with, with something, but I don't mind it. I'm just going to stick that right on there. 
And then I'm just gonna stick the Merry Christmas on there. Now I don't want my dimensionals to show in the window, so I'm only gonna add a little bit of glue on this side, right under the Merry. And that's gonna hold it. I just used a little bit of Tombow glue. That's gonna hold it just fine, just like that. Make it nice and straight. And that is your box. If you wanted to, you could also add a bow. I used Magenta Madness ribbon to add a bow to this. You don't have to, but if you wanted to, you absolutely could. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you make this box and I'll see you guys another time. Bye.